Hi guys, so let's have a look at three exercises from the Affinity Photo Workbook. Now this is a very good workbook. Um, just let me get a copy of it and I'll show you the cover. There's the Affinity Photo Workbook. Let me hold that back from the screen a bit. Isn't that wonderful? Thick as anything and lots of information in it. Well, we've got three exercises coming up here straight from the workbook let me put that down there a moment and you'll love them the three exercises are cropping images uh, straight crop um, unconstrained a cropping constrained to a various aspect ratios and i'll use one in particular 16.9 which is like a movie screen width same width and height as this one and the other one is the golden spiral which is fairly obscure and you'll have to look it up. Google is your friend. <laughs> okay. Now, we're going to have a look at an exercise from the workbook. The Affinity Photo Workbook. A very good book and lots of interesting exercises in it. Now, one of the ones we're looking at is cropping. And how to use cropping in Affinity Photo version 2 on the iPad. Nothing special, nothing different, just that one. Now, the first thing I'll do is turn snapping on. Now, I've loaded the photo image in already. Now, this is one supplied via the workbook. You'll also find it on my website in the Affinity Photo download folder, both on the UK site and the .com site, .uk.com. Both the same, robertcharmers.com robertcharmers.uk too easy okay now the cropping tool you can see the bird is obviously the main focus of this image but it's top center and we want to change the focus so the cropping tool you can see it there let's let's show it there one two three fourth down from the top on the left side i'm holding the i'm holding the question mark down there and it shows you those okay just tap the crop tool and there it is there. Now that's divided up into three levels, top, center and bottom level and left, middle and right. Now we want that bird pretty close to the center and we can't get it any higher than where the wing is because the wing is right on the edge. So we've got to bring the others up. So let's start with the bottom. And we'll bring that level there up. Now the body of the bird, you can see the, the um, line is just about intersecting the bird's chest. That puts, or on his foot, it's right on his beak. Now that puts that bird almost in the center of that um, group of rectangles, which is where we want it. It's the wing, top of the wings is in the top third. The body's in the centre third and the lower bit is the lower third. Now there's a reason that it's separated like that because that's where your eye finds these things. But unfortunately we've got the left and the right as well. So we want to reduce those. So just bring that one in. But not too much because it's moving the bird out of that centre segment. And you can see there it puts it right on the left. Now, if we move that back in on from the right-hand side, let's crop that image down. Now, we've got a bit of interesting rock in the lower left quadrant. The bird's body is in the center, and that's the focus of the image. That's where your eye lands first. The details are in the top of the wings and the tail, and there's a bit of blue water out to the right. Now, you'll see in the top bar, it's got thirds, and that's how we want it. It's unconstrained. That means we can move it about. And next to that, there's a cross. If you've got it wrong, just tap the cross, and it will all go away. Um, you'll be just left with the original image. If we tap the tick, that'll be good. Now you can see the width and the height bars there. It's 1745.5. 2772.1 is the width. Mm, let's do two, two, let's make those nice round numbers. 
and let's just get rid of that one. Put a zero. Two, seven, seven. Now I've really messed it up, haven't I? Two, seven, seven. Zero. Two, seven, seven. Two. That's what we want. No points. And the bottom one is 1745.5. That's the height. Oh, no, we might leave that. That's okay. So let's just do that. The body of the bird is in the center, wings in the top third, and a bit of mm, landscape feature in the lower third. Very nice. And there's our, there's our bird. Let's see. There we go. That's just where we want it. A nice composition. Birds in the center, heading out to sea, just about to leap off the rocks. And that's all there is to it. It's locked as it came in. It's background. There's nothing else in that image. We've just used the, we've just used the cropping tool to give the bird some shape. Don't worry about this dot down here. As you know by now, you can turn that on or off. Up there, toggle command controller, and that's off. I like to leave it on because you can use that for other things. Now, I think that's pretty good. And that's all we need for this one. And, of course, let's export that then. Now that we've got a nice photo, export it. Now, I don't want to save it anywhere other than in my photos folder. So let's just save the image. That automatically saves it to Apple Photos. Too nice. Don't want to save it anywhere else, so we'll just cancel all of that export business. I can show you the bird by going to Photos, and there's the bird there. Look at that. Too nice. Lovely. Okay. Back from there. Back to there, and there's our bird. That's all there is to it. So for this second example, and I've loaded it in here with some Chinese text, that means learn from the past, by the way. Now in this sample, uh, we're going to highlight as much as possible just the Chinese text. And this is cropping to the constraints so that the image that you create will be constrained to a specific aspect ratio. And the one I'm going to use is 16 to 9, which is a fairly common cinematic uh, ratio, if you like. There are many others as 1 to 1, which is square, and so on. But let's look at 16 to 9. That means when the image is displayed on, a, on an iPad or a computer or a website, for example, if it's in a correct aspect ratio, you won't get any image outside of the areas that you want. It will all be constrained within a specific aspect ratio area. I know that sounds complex, but you can look it up if you like. It's fairly straightforward once you get used to it. Now, for this exercise, we need the cropping tool again. Um, I can turn off that layer. We don't need that there. This is using, of course iPad ver and uh, Affinity Photo version 2 on the iPad. So let's grab the cropping tool, which as you now know is on the left hand side. And you can see we've got 4640 pixels by 3466 pixels. Hmm, which is not really of any use to us. But up the top you can see we've got the thirds, none or spiral. We just want thirds. But we don't want unconstrained. We don't want the original ratio, which is what the photo is. We're going to go to custom ratio. Now, there it is there. Nothing's changed in the bar over the left-hand side here, except that. Now, I just... That's because I touched the screen. Okay, let's go here, and we want the width, the aspect ratio of 16. And you think, oh, my goodness but the height of 9. Okay, unconstrained. Now that's a custom ratio. It's constrained to that ratio, 16.9.
The area that isn't selected is outside of that. Now, the interesting thing you may remember from the last exercise with the seagull where we could adjust it all. But this one here, if I bring in the left-hand edge, you can see everything moves because it's constrained. Now, the text, learning from the past, is just about in the middle. We've got a character out on the right and a character and a bit out on the left. That's pretty well where we want it. Do we want it any smaller? No, not really. We could bring it right in so that the brickwork is not there. But that whole image is now getting a bit small, really, to be useful. The aspect rate, it's, it's not an image size of 16 pixels by 9, it's an aspect ratio. Now, I'm not too sure what the pixel count there is, but we can have a look. If we want just that bit, just that bit of text. Now, mind you, if you're after a grunge background, you could not just select the text, but you could select that. Now, there's a nice piece of grunge. So you could use this to take grunge um, material from another photo for use in your own design work. Now, let's bring that right back down there. The center two characters are in the center quadrant in there. Well, thirds, actually. It's not a quadrant, is it? It's okay over there. That's okay there. Okay. Now, custom ratio, and let's see what happens when we tick the box. There we go. Doesn't that look nice? Now, there's a nice piece of grunge with some lovely Chinese characters on it. And all you need to do to save that is export it, share it to the images, and that shares it to Apple Photos. We can cancel that because I don't want to export it to a PNG or anything. As you can see, it's now in there, and there it is. That's the one we wanted. Now, there's the bird that we did before. That one's there. Too nice. Okay. Now, back to Affinity Photo version 2. And that's all there is to it. Really, it's quite simple. Now, here we have the third in the exercise, and we're going to be cropping to the golden spiral, which if you've done any design work or been to a, a graphics design school, you'll know what that is. But it's, and you can look it up, of course, Google is our friend. This is the third exercise in the set of exercises for the Affinity, work, Affinity Photo Workbook. A bit of a tongue-tied one. Affinity Photo Workbook and I'm using version 2 on the iPad. So let's get that straight. Now we'll select the cropping tool as usual. And there's the cropping tool, custom ratio, with the golden spiral in place. Now what I want to do with that golden spiral is put the spiral in the center of the face of the woman, the statue. Now you can see on the right hand side that's actually gone outside the boundaries of the image which will crop it in a rather strange manner. So if we bring the image in you can see that's brought it right on the edge. I put snapping on so you saw the green line. It's moved the center of the spiral slightly to the left of the woman's face. So let's bring that right into the edge away from the edge of the image and put the center of the spiral. Now the center of the spiral, you can see, is the focal point of the image. And everything else is in proportion to that. The little statue of the angel on the right hanging onto the... Mm, looks like it might be a lion or some sort of a pet. Strange thing for a little angel to be hanging onto. But there you go. The center of the spiral is right on the statue's nose. And everything else is in proportion to that. Never mind all the, the size of the statue and where it is. 
The statue may well have been designed with the golden spiral in mind because it's been around for centuries, this method of um, design. And that's all there is to it. It means that everything is in the right proportions and in the right place to conform to that golden spiral ratio um, design format. And it's a custom ratio, so you can still apply the golden format. It's 16 by 9, as you can see there. I didn't even have to set that because good old affinity remembers your last settings. Remember that. What you did before is remembered in the, if you're still working in the same exercise. So I won't go any further with this because if you want to know how the golden spiral works, as I say, Google is your friend. Um, and you can get really complex designs going if you... Keep in mind the golden triangle. Not the golden triangle, sorry, the golden spiral. The golden triangle is something entirely different. <laughs> okay, the golden spiral. The last of the three exercises in this set. Affinity Photo, version 2, on the iPad. Cropping of images. Let's apply that. And there it is. Nothing extra, but the centre of the photograph is the woman's face, the statue of the woman's face. That's your focal point, and you can see that the rest of the um, the rest of the design, the rest of the design elements are actually off to the side. That's the important part. When your eyes see that photo, they automatically go to the face, and that's exactly what you want. Okay, that's it for these three exercises. Hope you enjoyed that.